In this lecture, we'll be learning about Hebrew conjunctions. Specifically, we'll be focusing on the various way the conjunction Vav can be translated in functions within a sentence. Let's begin by defining what a conjunction is. I understand that most people, they understand inherently what a language is and how they function, but maybe are, not, are less familiar with specific terms or concepts. Conjunctions, join words, phrases, or clauses, and express relationships between them. They may be of two types. The first one is coordinate conjunctions, and the second one, subordinate conjunctions. In this lecture, we'll be specifically focusing on the first, coordinate conjunctions. Coordinate conjunctions, sometimes called coordinating conjunctions, is a word that joins two elements of equal grammatical rank and syntactical importance. That is, it almost functions as a plus slash equal sign. It's plus meaning adding two things and equal in the sense that they're both functioning in an equal way. To give you some English examples, coordinate conjunctions include for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. When we use these English coordinating conjunctions, we actually are joining words that are similar. That is like verbs and verbs or nouns and nouns or adjectives and adjectives. For example, I like cats and dogs. You can see that the conjunction and here are connecting two nouns. They're both nouns. They both have equal function. However, you can also use conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions, to put together two independent clauses. Independent clauses means clauses that can stand on its own, usually with a subject, verb, and object. I like cats, but I don't like dogs. Here, you can see that the coordinating conjunction but is combining two independent clauses. I like cats. This is a sentence that can stand on its own. It completely makes sense. And I don't like dogs. This is another independent clause. You can see that it has a clear subject, verb, and object. So the but talks about the relationship between these two equal um, level of um, clauses in a syntactical way. In Hebrew, there are actually only two coordinating conjunctions. The first one is the Vav. It occurs over 5,000 times. And we actually are going to have seven various ways that this Vav can be translated in functions in a sentence. A second option is the coordinating conjunction O, which appears 311 times. And this usually means or. It kind of gives an alternative, one thing or the other. Here, are the seven ways that a coordinating conjunction vav can be translated or functions within a sentence. The first one is but. This serves adversatively. And second, and. Here you can see that it's a conjunctive. It's adding things. Third way is or. It gives alternatives. Fourth, we can translate it as that is. It, this one is a, a use called apexegetical. The fifth one, we can translate Vav also as while, giving a circumstance, circumstantial use of it. The sixth way to translate is then, as in an if-then clause, this conditional uh, use. And finally, the seventh one, there's not a good way to translate it because you have to do it case by case. But this is when a Vav function hen, in, in a way we call hendai, this, in which two words or conjoined into one specific phrase through the use of Vav. In this lecture, I will specifically focus on five uses. That is, when we translate it into but, or, that is, while, and, then. The reason being, the conjunctive use of and is the most common and natural way that it appears. So I don't think we need much of an explanation of how this functions. However, the seventh one, I would actually not explain here because it's quite rare and it's kind of unique. So 
if you come across the disuse, just make sure to use one of these grammar books to find out what use it is. When you when you when all else fails, it's a hendiatus. But that is quite rare. The first use that we'll be focusing on today is vav as the as the word but adversatival uses. Sometimes this is also called disjunctive because it um, disjoins or contradicts two things. This introducing a contrasting or antithetical idea. That is, there's a contrast between what precedes the vav and what follows the vav. And an example of the adversative use of vav can be found in Genesis chapter 6. We read, I regret that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Here you can see that the Noach Matzah Chen is serving adversatively as a contrast compared to Nachamti, I will, I have um, regretted, um, I, I, I regret something. Here you see that even though God or Yahweh regrets in the preceding sentence, here in contrast to all the evil, Noah was one who found favor in God's eyes. You can see in this case, you wouldn't be translating Bob as and, but the right way to translate this is this adversative use of but. Another important way that Bob is used in Hebrew is with the connotation of or. This is, it introduces an alternative. The Bob joins alternatives and options to the list. Let me give you an example. In this passage, we actually read this uh, command or prohibition of not doing work on the Sabbath. Lo ta'se kol melacha ata. You shall not do any work. However, we, the list goes on and it gives, keeps adding alternatives. Neither you nor bincha u bitecha, that is, neither your sons nor your daughters. And the list goes on. It says, any one of these people that are listed here, neither one, anyone, is not supposed to be doing work. Here you can see that or, or nor in this sense, is the most appropriate way of translating the vav in this sentence. In some instances, though, a good way to translate the vav is that is, that meaning this is functioning apexegetically, in which the vav introduces a clause or phrase that describes more fully, clarifies, expands, or paraphrases the clause that precedes it. That is, whatever following vav further explains, describes the clause or sentence preceding it. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we actually read that for they are people void of counsel. That is, they do not have understanding. Here, the first half states, that this goy, this people group, or ovad etzot hema, they are without counsel. And specifically, how, what does that mean, or how does that look? The ain and without bahem among them, tevina understanding. Void of counsel, in other words, meaning means they have they lack understanding. You can see how the second clause, the, the clause following Bob, is further explaining and adding information to the first. Vav also can be translated as while, as in circumstantial. The Vav introduces a clause that details the circumstances under which a certain action in the previous clause takes place. In Genesis chapter 24, we're in a scene where we are introduced to the character Rebecca coming to the well. It reads, Rebecca yotzeat ve kada ar shikma. Rebecca came out while her jar was on her shoulder. Here we see that the first sentence or statement is Rebecca came. And the second part following Vav is answering the question, well, when did she come? And here she, we read that, well, she came while her jar was on her shoulder. 
this, this gives uh, the idea of the circumstances or what was happening when the first verb was uh, taking place, the first action was taking place. Another important function of the verb is used in an if-then that is a conditional sentence. The verb introduces the apotesis of a conditional sentence. For those who are unfamiliar with this expression protasis and apotesis, you should know that protasis is a grammatical way to talk about an if clause. And, and apotesis is, gives the then, the second half. If something happens or if a certain, uh, certain condition, then the result is as follows. So here there is a protasis and apotesis and Vav can function to introduce the result. An example of this use of Vav in a conditional sense is seen in Genesis chapter 31. In this sentence, we read that if he says thus, the speckled one should be your wages, and then all the flock bore speckled ones, you can see that the sentence becomes, begins with this conditional statement, if so and so. And then the vab gives the apotesis, then what happened as a result of that statement. That is, then yaldu um, kor hatson nekudim, that is, all the flock, what they bore, ended up becoming speckled ones. The, con the condition and result of the condition is seen in this text. I hope that the examples that I gave give you a good sense that at this point, it's not good enough to simply translate Vav every time you see it as Vav. In fact, Vav has very distinct ways that they're used in different ways that you should translate them depending on the literal literary context and their usage. And the best way to go about this is to read a grammatical textbook and find out how different ways we should be aware that a certain maybe conjunction functions. In order to do this, one great way to do it is to look up reference, Hebrew reference um, books. Here are four excellent options that, that there are out there. Um, you can use any of these, and my, my advice is if you come to a certain particle or verb or, or expression that you're not aware of, try looking about the function in, in the entries of these books. Say, well, how, how are the different ways Vav function? You go to a conjunction section and read all the different ways that Vav could be functioning. And a lot of these biblical te these textbooks will give you biblical examples that will help you identify and learn and get a sense of the different ways that a conjunction may be functioning in your sentence.